Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the dangers of Christianese. What is Christianese? You may have heard me use this before, heard this term before, but it's basically using a lot of Christian phrases that are thrown around almost like a magic potion. Don't get me wrong, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, I believe love conquers all, but it is very dangerous to just use words that you don't really mean. It's dangerous on both a scientific and a spiritual level. On a scientific level, we call this cognitive dissonance, where there's an actual disconnect between words and the actions. So what that means, for example, is that you might say, I'm going to pray for you, but actually that person irritates you. You don't like them. You think what they are going through is dumb. So when you say you're going to pray for them, it's almost like pass the buck prayer. You're not really going to pray for them. If you, whatever you say and do, now this is quite a complex concept, so just bear with me. I'm going to make it as simple as I can. Whatever you say is coming from a thought that you've built in your head. You can't just speak. It isn't just some random sound that comes out of you. What you say is first a thought that you have thought about for a long enough time that you've actually created a physical structure inside of your brain with your mind, your mind being separate from your brain. So you're speaking from a root. You're speaking from a physical and non-physical root. So therefore, if you are saying to that person, I'll pray for you, but actually what you really mean is just go away. I'm not going to pray for you. I don't think you're, you're valid. Your, your issue is valid or you irritate me or whatever. That's the real truth. So essentially, you are lying because what you are saying is not really what you mean. So you, even though the words may sound good, I'll pray for you, things will work together for you, etc. What you're actually saying is toxic and, the, and you're generating a toxic energy. Now, not only is that damaging you, because anything toxic in your brain is going to actually cause brain damage. And cognitive dissonance is a, cla- is a very classic way that we cause damage in our own brains. But it's also going to be picked up as a mixed message by the other person. So they may not quite be able to put their finger on it because it sounds like you're saying the right thing. But they're sensing the dissonance. They're sensing that it's not the truth. So cognitive dissonance is actually lying. And we know that the Bible is very clear that we shouldn't lie. It's actually better not to say something than to just throw out some Christianese in a situation. It's the same thing as like if something happens in your life and let's now say it's your life and it's not a connection, a communication you're having with someone else and you're going through something. And instead of like really coming to grips with what you're going through, you just speak scriptures, you speak Christianese as though it is going to be uh, like, ma- like magic away everything that it's just going to the words are, start, are just going to in themselves have enough power just to eliminate the situation but that's not what the bible says that's not what you as an intelligent being made in the image of a very uh, very intelligent god are designed to do you're designed to think things through to really be careful and intentional about what you're saying so if you don't really believe that god will make that situation work together for you that's okay. It's better to be honest and to actually say, I just, I just can't see this. I can't see how God's going to fix this. And in doing that, you are honest, you are open, you avoid the cognitive dissonance, you don't damage the brain, and you're actually now spiritually acknowledging that God can do stuff, but you don't think it can work in your life, which is not the end of the world. It's the beginning of getting toward, working towards a solution. There's no point in professing a power but they're not demonstrating it in your life. So in other words, there's no point saying God will do it, but then you really, what you're really believing is that it not, it's not going to happen because you ultimately are a free-thinking human being. We see clearly in Deuteronomy 30.19, for example, where every, every, every moment of every day, we can choose life or we can choose death. We can choose the right decision. We can choose the wrong decision. We see throughout scripture, we see throughout life how we are encouraged to, to make choices about the good, between the good and the bad. And we know the impact of those on ourselves. So we, it's very important that we align what we say with what we really believe. So while you're trying to work this out, while you're trying to build this connect, it's better to be honest and to acknowledge and say, okay, well, that's where I'm going. That's my goal. My goal is to get to the point where I believe X, Y, and Z. But I'm not going to say it and just hope by saying it as a positive, as a positive affirmation that it's just going to change how I think. I have to change how I think. I have to acknowledge that this is where I'm at. And day by day, this is where I'm working towards the correct kind of thinking. 
Let me give you an example of, of, of how dangerous it is to just throw out Christianese randomly. Just recently, I was giving a talk at a mental health summit on dealing with toxic people and how to deal with this in your life. And one person came up to me and they said afterwards, when I gave a description, they came and asked me a question and said, there's someone in my life who is so toxic that there's absolutely no ways that they can be helped. They even went on to say, they're literally not from God. They're beyond hope. They're beyond redemption. And they've chosen to run as far away as possible from those people. This person was so angry, so filled with bitterness, so frustrated that I was actually even quite shocked, especially because this person was actually a prominent leader in the church and someone who would go on the stage, worship God and tell, talk about the miracles of God, speak lots of Christianese about how God is a miraculous God, God is a powerful God, God is a forgiving God and how we've got to love and forgive. So immediately right there and then, it was massive cognitive dissonance, massive damage occurring in this person's brain, and also massive spiritual damage. And not only to that person, but what about the people that overheard that particular person? So I, my response was actually to say, I was quite shocked, I have to be honest with you. My response was to say, do you believe that God is all-powerful? And this person immediately responded, without a doubt, God is omniscient and gave me a whole lecture about God being powerful using lots of Christianese. Then I said, okay, do you believe that love conquers all? And that person said, absolutely, and quoted scriptures, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then I said, well, you pretty much shot your own argument in the foot, because if you believe God is all-powerful, God is love, You and I proceeded to explain cognitive dissonance and how you are actually, there's a huge disconnect between what you say you believe and what you are actually applying in your own life. And this is an example of Christianese creating cognitive dissonance. If you say something, what I want you to take away from this is if you say something, be sure that you mean it or rather don't say it. Rather say where you're at in that point. It would have been healthier for that person to say to me, I am really battling. There's a person who has really, really hurt me and they justified and it really is genuine. And I happen to know that that person was very hurt by a person. But it's better to have said to me, I'm really battling with this. I know God is a God of love, but I just can't see it in this situation. It's better to have been honest and to have spoken about where they were at instead of throwing out the Christian knees and then completely saying and believing the opposite. That is dangerous. Okay, so we've got to make sure that we are saying what we believe and understanding that this is a progress. It's a pro it's it, you're not going to immediately be at the point where you're going to say exactly what you want to believe because we're going working towards a goal. So it's rather breaking the big goal of I really believe God can help me. I really believe I can forgive that person for that toxic action. I'm going to forgive that person. It's rather I want to forgive them, but I'm so in so much pain because of this, this, and this. And actually learning to process that pain, getting through that pain, being honest with yourself. And then drawing on, if you're drawing on scriptures or whatever, drawing on that to help you where you are in the process and working towards your, your goal. Re-evaluate what you're saying. Be constantly aware of what you are saying all the time. Research shows that we are actually able to monitor what we're thinking, feeling, choosing, and saying, and our bodily responses, and our facial expressions every 10 seconds. That means six times a minute, which means constantly we can monitor our thoughts, which goes very strongly, or is very strongly then connected with the scripture of bring all thoughts into captivity. So we need to be very intentional and remember that love is our ultimate goal. Are you operating in love? Use that as your guiding question as much as you possibly can during the course of the day, knowing that scientifically we are designed to constantly monitor every thought. If you want to know more about this, I recommend that you get my book, Think, Learn, Succeed, where I really dive into helping you to become very intentional about how you are thinking, feeling, and choosing, and the kind of mindsets that you develop, and how you're using your thinking, and the kind of thoughts that you are building inside of your head. So that's my latest book, Think, Learn, Succeed. I would also love to invite you to join me at my annual conference where I really dive into these things in tremendous depth. And it, it runs every single year. This year it's running in Dallas on the 30th of November and the 1st of December at the Anatole Hilton Hotel. And if you want to know more, go to drleafconference.com. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.